And we've talked some now about both pandas and NumPy. We've done a little bit of visualization within pandas itself. Uh, now it's time to start getting into uh, some more depth with matplotlib. And matplotlib generally takes as input uh, NumPy type uh, structures for, for plotting. So, so here's our roadmap. We're going to do this interactive as we've done the last uh, couple of videos. Uh, so we're going to talk about creating both temporal figures and scatter plots. We're going to spend a little bit of time tuning the, the figure elements that are being displayed. Um, MATLAB and MATPLOTLIB also support this notion of subplots. So that, that turns out to be quite useful. And, and then we'll spend a little bit of time uh, working with uh, coming back to pandas, repairing some data in pandas, and visualizing those results. And, and that will uh, give you some uh, nice e examples of what kinds of cleanup we can do uh, inside of pandas. Okay, so at this, at this point, we're still within the uh, environment that we have infant data loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and define my, my constants again just so we're in the habit of doing that. Font size of 18, figure size of 10 by 6. I th think we also already have variables x, y, and z. Let's check and make sure. So yes, x, x is already a numpy vector. So let's go ahead and, and plot these, I think time we also have uh, defined already. So this was done in the previous video. So let's go ahead and build a, a nice plot uh, using the X, Y, Z, and time uh, data. So there are a whole variety of ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to show you a very simple way. To, and if you want to get more complicated, then there are certainly lots of things that you can do uh, to, to, to build much more interesting plots. So what this line does is it tells matplotlib that we're creating a, a brand new figure. This takes as input a whole variety of parameters. Uh, in my case, I'm just specifying one non-default value, which is figure size. And the plot command says, given the current figure, we're going to draw a curve and the curve is going to be a function of t along the horizontal and x along the vertical. And just as in MATLAB, we can specify the, the line style. In this case, I'm specifying that the, the line is going to be red. We'll do the same for, for y and z. So plot y, the y dimension in uh, green and the z dimension in blue. Okay, so so these will this will generate three different curves on one figure, but we can also augment the figure with some other uh, additional information. So let's give it uh, some some labels. So plt y label position in this case it's uh, units or meters, and it's useful to to specify the font as well. And let's do the same for the horizontal. And this is time in seconds. And I'm going to add a legend as well. That takes as input a list that should be then correspond, the length of it should correspond to the number of curves that we've dropped into the figure, so our x, y, z there. And I'm also going to specify a font size. OK, so there we go. So let's go ahead and execute that bit of code. And there's the resulting plot. So it's dropped our, our axis labels. At, at these locations, we, we have 0 to 300 seconds, which is what we expect. The legend is automatically uh, positioned in this case, but you can also specify where you want it to go. 
Uh, and uh, the, I guess the other thing to say about uh, looking at these data is, is that we still clearly have gaps within the data. And again, that, that's due to the amount of numbers that are in these time series. Okay, so let's construct a scatter plot. I'm going to go ahead and copy what we have here. So at least have a starting point. So we're going to end up generating a new figure. It's just going to have one curve in it. It's going to be x, x by y. So we don't need these other two plot commands. Y label now uh, becomes y in meters and the x label becomes x in meters. And and we don't need a legend. So we'll take that out. Okay, so this is this is uh, akin to our top-down plot that we did uh, before within pandas. And that, sh that particular plot should look very familiar to us. Likewise, we can also look at X versus Z. Oops. We'll color this one in green just so it's clear. And the Y label is going to be in Z. Okay, so the, these three plots that we've generated, we clearly can see some gaps here. These are, as we said, due to the knotted numbers. Uh, if we were to uh, change our time series by removing the rows that, or, that, that contain these knotted numbers, we can uh, end up getting uh, some more contiguous uh, curves here. So let's go ahead and go through that process. So I'm, I'm going to create a new infant data object. So this is this is based on our original data frame and the drop drop in a function what it does is it says i with without any parameters it works through the data set and identifies rows that contain a not a number somewhere so it doesn't have not a number doesn't have to occur across all elements of the the row it just has to occur in one of them and the output is a brand new data frame object that contains just the rows that uh, do not have not in numbers. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Execute that. Let's, let's describe infant data. And then we'll also describe the new infant data. infant data new uh, describe. And what I'd like you to pay attention to is the fact that the number of rows in the new data set is uh, a bit different. So notice that the, the, the count for our time axis here is 15,000 and that number has uh, changed here. In fact, the count is the same for uh, all of our columns, uh, whereas the, the count was different for the left versus right, and of course time, we had valid values for all of those elements. So we've removed some of our data. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and extract the NumPy vectors from this new data set. to kind of do a lot of cut and paste here to make this go a little bit quicker. So x new is left wrist x. And likewise, we're going to do this for y and z. Oops. y, z, left wrist, left wrist y, and left wrist z. Okay, I'm going to scroll back to 
our original temporal plot here. So just take a, a quick look at that. And remember that we do have the, the gaps in the, in the data. We're now going to generate a plot. We're going to build a plot that is very similar to this one. Except instead of using our original data, we're going to use our, our new data. So T new, X new, Y new, and Z new. Okay, every, otherwise everything stays the same. And now if you look at that temporal plot, you, you can see that uh, there are no more gaps. And, and the reason behind this is now uh, the, the not a numbers are, are, are no longer there. Before, when we had not a number, what the plot routine does is it just doesn't plot that segment of the curve. But now that we've removed the not a numbers, uh, what uh, happens, because this is a line plot, is that it just does linear interpolation from uh, the, the, the last uh, valid value to the next valid value. So, for example, the missing data that we had in this area here now has just turned into a linear interpolation. Likewise, let's pan back up and stare at this figure here. Let's, let's generate the, the corresponding figure. So this is with the original data, and again, there are gaps there. And now we're going to plot x nu versus y nu. And, and you can see the, the general shape of the plot is the same, but now we no longer have the, the gaps. OK, so in, in the presentation here, I've been kind of scrolling back and forth up and down this, uh, this notebook to, in order to compare figures. But it really actually makes sense for us to uh, produce figures that we can set side by side. So let's go ahead and and do that in, in this context here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, paste in our original plot routine uh, for x versus y. And now what we're going to do is not put them just in, put one in a figure. We're going to put multiples in a figure. And the way that we do this is uh, by using the subplot command. So let me set that up. OK, so, so this, this first line, the original one, says create a new figure. And then within that figure, we're going to create a subplot. The one means that there's going to be one row of subplots and two columns. And this is the first element of, of that set. So, uh, so this allows us to address uh, individual cells within this grid. So by setting up this, this subplot, the next plot command or commands will get dropped in, into that subplot. So, so we'll have that there. And let's also plot our cleaned up data. So now I'm going to switch over to subplot. It's still one row, two columns, but we're going to go to the second element in that grid and plot x nu versus y nu. And for fun, we'll make this uh, green. OK, so let me execute that. And, and now we have a figure that contains two subplots. And there are, uh, there, there's one row of these subplots and uh, two columns. And, and, you, and this gives us a nice ability to very directly compare the original data in red against the, the data in green. And you'll see, say, for example, there's, there's a gap right there, and that has been repaired by linear interpolation. That linear interpolation has happened inside the plotting mechanism. It hasn't changed our data at all. In, in this particular case, we've, we've sort of squished the, the uh, horizontal axis here. So it actually 
could be convenient to make a modification to our figure size. Say it would be nice to double the, the, the width of our figure. Um, the thing to remember is that figure size itself is a tuple with two elements. So let's create a, a new tuple based on figure size. So uh, doing things this way, uh, this says, go to the figure size tuple, extract the zeroth element and use it as the zeroth element for the new tuple. And then the oneth element, we're going to extract that and use that for the oneth element for our tuple. So this, the, for the new tuple. This is not going to change how the figure is laid out, but we can change, for example, uh, the, the width. So let me, so I'm going to add this multiply by the, the zeroth element by two. And, and now we've uh, increased the, the width of the total figure by a factor of two. And, and then that allows the subplots to fill in a little bit more naturally. I want to show you one other thing, just for emphasis, we'll put it in a different place in our notebook here. So I'm starting from our same configuration. I'm, I'm going to go back to our original width, but we're going to change our height by two. So this subplot, again, it's row number of rows, number of columns. Let's switch that around. So we're going to do two rows and one column, and two rows and one column here. So the, the, this one here is still correct, uh, and this two is, is still correct because we want it to go into the first cell versus the second cell. And if we execute this, now these, these subplots are not going to be horizontally aligned with one another. They're going to be vertically aligned. And there we go. In fact, that plot's a little bit too big to fit on my screen. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is an alternative to handling our invalid values. And before we just remove those rows, another possibility is for us to replace the, the values in, of, those in, of those invalid cells uh, with something else. And there are a variety of different ways to accomplish this. One possibility is just to choose a, a constant value. So, so let's, let me show you how that works. So we're going to create yet another new pandas object here. Infinite data fill NA. So before we did a drop NA, and now we're we're doing a fill NA. This says go to every element that's invalid inside of the data frame object and set that value to zero. And depending upon your data set, this particular choice might might be okay. It might make sense to pick a, a different value like a, a median or, or a mean value to fill in. Uh, for this particular data set, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense and, and that'll become clear here in a moment. I am missing a dot right there. And then we also need to extract out the new data. And I'm going to pause, just cut out that statement there. Now that we have this new data frame object, I'm going to go ahead and extract our time elements and X, Y, and Z elements. So you've already seen how that works. And now let's go ahead and generate a, a temporal plot of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a non-default fig size here, make it twice as high. So we're going to plot x as a function of time in red. And, oops, and we're going to plot x nu as a function of t nu in green here. That should be x nu right there. And just so it's clear what the two curves, the, the curves are different, I'm going to go ahead and shift these values down by uh, a little bit. So let's go ahead and plot that. And you can see the, the, uh, the red curve uh, has those gaps. The green curve, this is where we did the drop NA and, and the gaps have, are being linearly interpolated 
by the plotting mechanism. And actually, let's make this figure just a little bit shorter here. Okay, so that now fits on, on the screen there. The last thing then is to plot the cases where we filled in the, the values with zeros. And hopefully you can guess what's going to happen here. I'm going to shift it down by 0.2, just so, so one, we can see the shape of all of these curves. And so that might be a little bit of a surprise. The, the issue is that there are quite a few not a numbers inside of our time series, such that uh, the the curve is it, it's doing the right thing for a very brief period of time, and then it pops down to to, uh, to zero, which has now been shifted down by 0.2, uh, and then it pops back up to the curve and follows it along for a few more samples, and it pops back down, and it's coming down to that zero so often that it looks like we have a a, a solid uh, region down here. Okay, so, so this is one of those cases where filling in with a constant zero or even a, a constant for the uh, value that corresponds to say the mean or the median, that might make sense for lots of different problems. For this particular data set, this is probably not the, the right answer. So we'll uh, work on uh, some other strategies here uh, in, in a couple of the coming uh, videos.